Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I am your girl on Revival of Viata. Here on my channel, I talk about Jesus, fashion, relationship, and lifestyle. And today we're talking about relationship. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Press the subscribe button because it's going to get lit. I promise you. Hi, guys. Does this face look familiar? Yes? I just introduce yourself. Oh, hi, guys. I'm Sophia, her youngest sister. Yeah, that's that's the younger one. This is the village one. <laughs> I'm the city one, as you can see. <laughs> anyway, guys, today we're talking about relationship. We're gonna get the tea from Sophia. All her business. She's finished. She's about to spill the tea to all of you guys. I got you. I told you guys. I got you. Anyway, but before we get to that, Sophia actually purchased a book for she and I. It's called 101 Questions to Ask Before You Get Engaged. I can just feel it in the hospital. If you are love is coming. Say amen. 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 Love is coming how <laughs> way this year. Okay. So the book is actually. Why do you make it sound as if we're so desperate, man? We're not desperate now, but you've been praying. Have you not been praying? I have. So you don't I think have. God is hearing us? He is. He is. Uh -huh. So you're just claiming it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? She just made it sound like a desperate. We ain't desperate, okay? That, don't get it together. We're not. And this is the book. Let me briefly read you guys like a, a brief summary of what the book about is about. The book is by H. Norman Wright. That's the author. And he happens to be the same author from Before You Say I Do. So, are you ready to walk down the aisle? How can I be sure? Is he really the right one for me? Deciding to spend the rest of your life with someone is one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. The key to a successful marriage is getting to know your partner before you take the plunge. Relationship expert noted couple counselor Norm Wright will steer you through a series of soul searching questions, even difficult ones that need to be addressed to help you discern if you've met the one. Enjoy learning more about each of these as you discuss. So in this book, they have questions that pertain to your spiritual journey, how you handle finances, whose family you spend the holidays with, previous relationships and breakups, potentially annoying habits and patterns. So we're going to get into it. So we're going to make it into a, a little activity. Okay, so first of all, if you're interested in purchasing the book, Sophia actually got this from Thrift Books. She said she purchased it for $5. I believe there's a PDF version as well, yeah? Yeah, but there's nothing like just writing in the book and going back to it. And That's so true. Sad. Because I mean, where the questions are, you actually have the opportunity to write down the response of your partner, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I would prefer you getting the book, the actual book. I think it'll make more sense. But yeah, five dollars on thrift books. Try to check it out on Amazon and other different platforms. Okay, so we're gonna make it a little bit funner. Instead of us just sitting here and doing a book review, I'm gonna ask Sophia some juicy questions about relationship, about her ex and her base. You know what I'm saying? Ex and base. Yes, girl. And you're gonna have study question. And she's also going to ask me some questions I'm going to answer. But we're going to go back and forth. That way it doesn't feel like an interview. So who wants to go first? Me. I'll go first. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. I don't know. I said it first. Rock, paper, scissors, my friend. What are you doing? So Rock, paper, scissors. I choose scissors. Let's go. uh -uh. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. we Okay, let's do rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Uh-uh. It's rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, now. Let's go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. The rock. No, 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 no Say I was your man, girl, and I'll ask you, hello, baby, darling, beautiful, <laughs> <You're so annoying. laughs> beauty, beauty, baby love, what are five reasons a person would want to spend the rest of their life with you, and three reasons why they wouldn't? <laughs> I told you I was going to get you. I said the question. Don't overthink it. <laughs> okay, because... Um, I'm his helper. Okay. Because I'm God fearing. Uh huh. Because um, um, because we're gonna make beautiful kids together. Okay. <laughs> this is 
tough, man. You're it's just tough. about you, like it's, it's like you go because I have a beautiful personality. I have four, one more. Uh, you see something that you didn't see in all the women. Ooh. Oh, okay. okay. So now, Nick, tell me three reasons why they wouldn't. Somebody would not want to spend the rest of their life with you. I don't see no reason. No, so be, have to be. <laughs> come on now. Nobody's perfect. So just talk about like flaws that you know that you can possibly change for the better. Maybe they just. I'm too short. Short. <laughs> I'm like look, five one. Somebody <laughs> wants to spend the rest of their life with you because you're high. Yeah. That's a shallow person. Uh huh. Um. Maybe cultural part could also play. Maybe that's why they might not want to spend okay. the rest of their life with me. It's your culture that's intense. And no, but some people just be tripping. I think it's only two. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but. Or maybe she's just perfect. <laughs> not like some of us that actually have flaws. So here, I on. mean, I do have flaws. But... Two yummy, 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 yummy. What is that? <laughs> Okay, I've, I, you answered my questions. What's the I hope I did good you? because yeah, did. that was tough. I had to really think about it. Yes, yeah, she did. I don't know why. So my question would be, That's how would you keep your romance alive if you were married? If we were to be married? Why are you so petty? You would choose a question like that. Um, I like to know a little bit. I'll keep our romance alive by making it spicy all the time. In what way, please, into details? Like, we're adults on this channel, so when I do get married, best believe it's not going to be the same thing. It's not going to be the same lingerie. It's not going to be the same places. We're going to be spontaneous, you know, doing things outside of the house. I make sure that, you know, we do role plays. I make sure that I cook for you. The house is smelling good. I'm smelling good. So you, always, there's always a surprise. So that's how I always keep my romance alive. Okay. Yes, girl. She tried a little bit. <laughs> your second question, sis. Have you learned from your previous relationships that would make you a better partner for someone at this time? Tell us about your exes. What have you learned about that ex boyfriend? <laughs> Um, I would say I have learned to patience. Patient, patient with the person or patient with yourself. Actually, you learn to be patient. Yeah. Um, and actually, for both sides, okay. actually, with me, sometimes I'm not even patient for my own personal self. And now, when it comes to somebody, maybe I'm just in a hurry. But I've learned to be patient, to relax, mm. to take a chill pill. Sometimes mm -hmm. I I tend to just want to be like I might come and reach him like I need answers. Maybe you are like I need to think about it for a second. Mm -hmm. But I would just I'm in a hurry. I don't I don't just want to take a day or two to some people want time. Some people want to make sure they give you the right answers. Right. But me it looks like I just wanna jump into your throat and like I just wanna be in your head to figure it out. But, um their career life, you understand what I'm saying? Like, if maybe they tell you they want to do something and you're being patient but supporting them at the same time, mm -hmm. but you're patient, you're, you know there's a better chance of another better idea, but you have to, you know, patient. And then, trust. Mm -hmm. I trust people, but um, I tend to, my trust is very, is very s small, as in it's like, I don't know. I have to sometimes trust what you say and just believe it a little bit. She and Dan trust job, but, trust. Um, but yeah, that's good. I think that we all, many of us, can relate to that. You know, some of us is impatient and God is still working on us and yeah, for patience. My patience and trust as well. I mean, that's something I had to deal with and I'm still dealing with. Because based off of your personal experiences, you can come into a new relationship mm -hmm. thinking what this guy did to me in the past is going to be repeated, repeated again. Repeated the same. And we have to let bygones be bygones and understand that it's a clean slate mm -hmm. and this man does not have to pay for the very thing that someone else did to you. You're right. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. All right, sis, what's my question? Uh, my second question is, to what extent do you see the way you both communicate as similar and in what way is it different? What does the phrase learn to speak your partner language means to you? What ways that we communicate that are different? Um, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, for me, I would say we communicate in different ways where I like for things to be made plain. Like, if it's cold outside, tell me it's cold outside. If it's if there's something like I like for things to be black and white, 
whereby he wants me to figure things out. He wants me to perceive things. He wants me to to like think deeper, like think beyond the obvious. I'm like, anybody got time for that? Just let me know the answer. So I guess that's in ways that we communicate. And also we communicate in a different way where he's more expressive about his emotions and his feelings. Mm -hmm. And I'm more like gangster. I'm more like, I'm greedy with my emotions. Like I can feel it, but for me to open up my mouth and say, oh babe, you giving me butterflies, it's hard for me. And that's something I have to work on. But what does the phrase, learn to speak your partner language mean to you? It means when the, okay, learning to speak my partner's language means me um being empathetic like putting myself in his shoes if if i see that his love language is words of affirmation or physical touch then i have to be able to be i have to not be selfish and say okay Miata, i know you feel weird about telling this man that you know that you have fallen for him and he's the love of your life but this is something he needs to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs this affirmation. So speaking his love language means me being empathetic, putting myself in his shoes and not being selfish, saying, how would I feel if I was him? How would he feel if he was me? So, okay. yeah. Give him a five of a 10. Get she our tried, young she man. Tried. She tried, she tried. Your question mm -hmm. is, what is your greatest fear or concern about being married? What have you done to address this these concerns? <laughs> uh, is that not like people that are married question? No. What is your famous fear about being married? You will be married soon. You think you're a, a small shy. She's ripe for marriage. <laughs> so what did I ask the question again, Jerry? Okay, what is your greatest fear or concern about being married? Um, mm -hmm. my greatest fear would be divorce. Mm, greatest fear divorce. Okay. What yes. have you done to address this, these concerns? Hmm. I don't know, but I would say, um, really praying that the man God brings to my life, mm -hmm. it should be a man after God's heart. He should be ready to commit, like for us to always work things up work things out for us to always realize that there are going to be issues sometimes but we have to find a middle ground and always put god first in the middle of it i i know stuff happens in marriage and stuff but at the same time just somebody who also will be able to see my side and i'm seeing able to see his side and we're able to walk through our difficult and darkest moments if that answered the question properly right? it does but just to dive deeper in your mind I'm, I'm wondering like why did divorce come to your head first and also underneath each question they have like a paragraph and this one says fears are normal but are they realistic where did they originate if you fear divorce like where is that coming from like why would divorce be the first thing that comes to your mind because that's it that's, that's, that's reality wise uh -huh. um the percentage of people that get divorced are so much more than people that are married and a lot of people don't even just come to the marriage just because you know they really want to be married some of them just come because they just want to be attached but he wants to be in that situation but just like how you're saying um praying about your marriage way before you get married like I know I'm right for marriage, but I didn't start praying about marriage now. I started by praying marriage four or five years mm -hmm. ago. You understand? That's one. Number two, I think that also something that I'm working on is changing my mindset. Just because this is Bible says we're in the world but we're not of it. So just because yes, it is popular, it's hot in market. Yes. You you and your partner have to make up in your mind that divorce is not an option. Mm -hmm. <laughs> divorce is not an option. No mm -hmm. matter how hard things get. We can walk away for a minute, but we're going to work at it. So if, you, if the two, if you both of you come into that agreement, then I think that, especially just like how you said, we're God at the center of it all. You can weather the storm. Which is true. That's very true. Was that, that actually your a third question? question? Okay. Yeah. Was that your question or mine? I asked you or you asked yeah, me. Yeah, you asked me. Um, respect yourself with this next question. What are the three most valid memories you record from birth to age 18. What, what did the paragraph below say? Why do they want to know these things? Whether the memories are positive or negative events, who were the significant people involved? How have those, how have this memory shaped 
this person's life, who we are today is a reflection of our past experience. Wow. Three memories from my past. Yeah, from the time you were born to age 18. Um, weird enough, I remember, I don't know how old I was, but like during the Civil War in Sierra Leone, I remember being a little girl and like the rebels coming to knock on mommy's door and me hiding under the bed because they had guns and stuff. And I also remember us like running up Nunganville, the hills and bullet shots across our heads. Mm -hmm. That's so weird. So I probably was like five or something. I don't remember how I remember that. That's one. Another memory of mine that I vividly remember. Mm, that one is a is is, is, is a dark. It's deep. So yeah, I don't I don't think I want to talk about that. Um, I do remember my first kiss though. Was my first kiss was the guy that took me to prom. Yeah, I remember that. It it was it was horrible for my part because I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I'm saying, and then. <laughs> You said from birth to 18. Yeah, okay, I think it's enough of a memory. Right now, okay. my 18, respect yourself. 18, when I was 18, that's when I graduated. Oh, yes. my I think when at age 18 was the toughest for me because that's when I graduated from high school and I thought I was grown. So I was doing, I was living. Grown things. Exactly. Very Big reckless. girl things. Stop. <laughs> very reckless thing so thank god for jesus we're just gonna leave it at that next um you already asked me three questions already oh i did oh yeah, time yeah, is yeah. up i'm enjoying these stuff anyway guys we're gonna have a part two to this actually no before go let me ask you one more question no 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 i am done she asked she, like she asked the most difficult questions ever i had to be scratching my you know the funny part about this book is sometimes you go through it and you know the answers but then when you really it, it's something that you really have to think about it so did. much and with her question i bet she the answers i give today now by the time i go to bed i might actually have a very different perspective to it you why so that means because, you didn't give me honest questions no i did you're not authentic you're not realistic <laughs> you're not rapping. being serial she rapping i did but there are just some things that you start really thinking so deep about it Mm -hmm. and when you meet somebody else and you stand on your ground and somebody else does they might even bring light into what the question is and you'll be able to bring light into what the questions um, they might have asked to and it might be fun but you guys actually learn one or two things that might change your perspective of thinking so i would say yeah i did give my i mean i tried to be honest since i got this book i really haven't read it and maybe i haven't asked anybody because technically i got no boo to be eggs not equation but, i do so i will make sure that these questions get answered okay these questions finna get she answered she well no sophia this is one of the i think that this book is awesome and every single should get this book yeah if you're single like this book is a must it is a must it and is a must many times though when we get into it with dating relationships we're afraid to ask questions oh is it an interview yes it is an interview this is somebody you're gonna spend the rest of your life with like so i want to know everything from what happens when you when you blow your nose is your booger is green or yellow i want to know like what it smells like when you get us to i want to know like how your doodle -doo looks is it green or is it yellow ew <laughs> you know, What's that? <laughs> no, the point I'm trying to make is I want to know every detail, just like how I want you to know every detail of me. And another thing is, as much as these questions are so important, it's one thing for you to be able to listen to the answers and one thing for you to be able to also observe the person because I can be telling you what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, my behavior, what I'm telling you, they don't match. They don't match, and it's a problem. Sister, what's going on there? You know what I'm saying? Well, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for spending time with us. Yes. Yes. So make sure you do what? You subscribe to the channel. You give this video a thumbs up. And you share with your family and your friends. As always, I love you. But Jesus loves you so much more. And until next time, you have an arrival, arrival day. day. But hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Um, so just in case, you oh, know, you, you know, my makeup. face, right, uh, is not the best makeup. I look way more cuter. Like I slay my makeup way more better than this. But this, this video, I was actually forced to do it. So pardon just my foundation and my eyelashes. I thought she was even going to talk about my face. Guys, just so you know, Sophia is the one that did my makeup. Look how beautiful this is. Like, look at my eyeshadow. She did like some type of ombre situation look at my eyelashes if you see me now you want to marry me now you just want to 
you look like take away but no she does make up very well i don't Colo i only paint my yes. face yes. i'm not a makeup if, artist if you don't want the money i'll take I, it i was not in the line for makeup artist money, I'll take it. i only did this for my own oh, self so Jesus let's get that together she did a very lovely work on my makeup and i love it and i told her do my bridal shower i will not pay anybody you makeup artist you don't know me i don't know you she's gonna do my makeup for my bridal shower do you understand me okay thank you for watching god bless you <laughs>